Uh, so, uh, welcome to this session uh, where we're going to uh, see some of the examples of our work uh, with the uh, uh, government of Serbia, uh, government's office for IT and e-government over the past six or seven years. And I'll talk about uh, not only you know, good things, but also some uh, uh, challenges and uh, some things we learned along the way. So, uh, let's move on. Uh, the first thing that uh, we all know is that the government institutions collect a lot of data. But unfortunately, uh, uh, most of this data remains locked within these government inst institutions. And they treat this data not as a strategic resource, but as a, I would say, uh, um, side effect of their existence. So, you know, they have some uh, authority, they need to uh, provide a service to some government institutions or citizens, and they collect data, so data remains after, you know, they do what they do. Um, and, of course, they don't share data with other institutions and uh, the wider community. And uh, this approach really needs to change. It needs to change fundamentally. And the government uh, needs to start understanding data as a strategic resource. Um, of course, uh, um, uh, all blocks, roadblocks and obstacles for sharing data should be eliminated. I will talk about them uh, in the end, what I mean by, by these uh, uh, limitations. Um, another thing is really important uh, to, to, to say, and that is that uh, um, government data alone is not any more uh, enough uh, for, for, for uh, making decisions and understanding the changes in a fast-changing world of today. Um, Government data is uh, perhaps, uh, you know, of a more, uh, more of, uh, it has, a, you know, more quality, like, you know, the, st the, the official statistical data, but it's really slow. And the data of the private sector are, you know, more transactional in, in, in nature and uh, much closer to real time. So connecting uh, uh, private and public data is, is really important for understanding changes in, in today's world. And, uh, uh, and for government institutions to be successful in, 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 in leveraging the, 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 the data from the, uh, public sec from, from, from the private sector, they also need to collaborate more with the uh, private sector, not, in a sense, so not only in the sense of uh, being able to access the data, but also to leverage the technical capacities and uh, knowledge that government cannot easily replicate and which are more uh, usually available in the private sector. So uh, I mentioned that we uh, uh, worked a lot with our government partners on, on this through our projects over the past six or seven years. But uh, I'll just want to mention before uh, going into details uh, about you know, what uh, the concept of open data entails. It's basically data that is publicly available, uh, usually free of charge, usually on uh, some kind of uh, open uh, data portal like uh, data.gov.rs in Serbia. It's in a machine-readable form, meaning that you can process it using uh, freely available uh, computer programs. And uh, uh, the key part is that this data is uh, 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 available for, for any use, including commercial. So you can use it uh, for uh, your scientific research, or you can use it to build, uh, actually, products and integrate it into your own uh, business processes. And uh, to start with examples, uh, this is a, there's, a, there's a company called... Uh, I, if I recall correctly, Modra Jagoda. <laughs> it's a Slovenian company, and they uh, used the, the first data set that was ever published in Serbia by the Serbian uh, Drugs Administration. They published data on all approved drugs in Serbia, and they took this data, and they made an application for, that is used by tens of thousands of pharmacists in Serbia every day to check you know, uh, uh, the details about each uh, medicine, the dosage, and uh, uh, you know, the generic name, the trade name, etc. And, um, and what, what is interesting here to see is that uh, it's not only the government data, it's also enriched data. So uh, in the government database, you don't have the, uh, the information about prices, for instance, which they have, or the availability of this, uh, uh, these uh, drugs in uh, drugstores. So basically, uh, they, 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 they built on, 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 on open data published by the government. But, you know, they, 
they really could, it, it would be really burdensome for them to build this uh, on their own. So they use this uh, uh, open data. Uh, another example, uh, there was a mention of uh, public safety. This is a data set on uh, car accidents in Serbia published by the Serbian Ministry of Interior. Um, it's interesting uh, when you map them uh, because uh, this, this, this uh, clustering in the center is a uh, uh, garage on Obilic events in Belgrade. You wouldn't uh, believe how many <laughs> car accidents actually happen in garages. Uh, so, so it's really useful to, uh, you know, for, for planning better you know, uh, traffic safety. Uh, another example is the thing that we did with five cities in Serbia. It was with Niš, Kragujevac, Novi Pazar, Subotica, and Belgrade. And we helped them uh, to take all their data about public transport, meaning uh, you know, the lines of uh, public transportation, uh, timetables, uh, pricing, and put all this data into a GTFS format. It's a format, uh, open format uh, developed by Google, uh, so that this data can be then uh, entered into um, Google Transit and Google Maps, so you can then find your way through the city from A to B using public transport. Um, because this is open data, it is also available in Bing Maps, it is also available on OpenStreetMaps, it is also today available in mobile apps such as Move It. Uh, another example is, was also mentioned. This is, uh, uh, this is the API we supported Serbian Environmental uh, Protection Agency for developing a real uh, API for real time, all, uh, close to real time access. It's actually uh, hourly data, unverified hourly data from the national network of uh, air quality sensors. And uh, almost immediately when we published this, uh, I think it was uh, 2018 or 2018, I think it was, um, people started using it and integrating this into their uh, uh, applications for uh, uh, basically uh, providing people with the idea of, uh, of the air quality in their surrounding and alerting them. So this really raised the awareness of people about um, uh, the, the, the air quality in their surroundings. And this is an example of, of an app that uses this data. It's called uh, X Echo. Uh, we also worked with uh, more than 100 municipalities in Serbia to, to, to actually uh, release data on their budgets and uh, uh, spendings uh, in open data format. This data is available in raw format on the open data portal, but we also visualized it uh, so that citizens can easily understand uh, where public money is uh, first allocated and then spent. Uh, this is an example of uh, using uh, uh, private sector data. This is the this is a mapping of fires using satellite data. Um, you cannot easily map uh, forest fires uh, without using satellite, and uh, we needed this because uh, every fall and every spring, uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, in Serbia, uh, burn stubble, and. Um, and this is uh, surely one of top three pollutants uh, in, these, in, in, in the months of, I don't know, um, uh, March and October. So, so this, is, this is, for instance, uh, the, the, the mappings of fires in SREM in October. Uh, some missed opportunities. Yeah, we had missed opportunities. We uh, failed to, unfortunately, persuade uh, uh, Serbian municipalities to open data on uh, municipal works. Uh, and public utility outages. And this data is still disseminated like, uh, you know, in 1970s over radio, over TV and in newspapers. So if you don't read or you don't watch or you don't listen to radio, you will probably not know when uh, uh, they'll cut water or, or power for your block. You'll find out once it happens. While you could, you know, just receive a notification on your phone one day in advance, and it would be great if they just publish this information instead of screenshotting those word files and publishing them on Twitter. <laughs> so that was unfortunate that they didn't, uh, they didn't do it, but uh, you know, it's never too late. Um, another thing that we pitched to the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Finance during COVID was to use uh, anonymous sub pings uh, for mapping people movement and better target COVID uh, prevention measures. Also using uh, data from the online uh, uh, 
online portals for, uh, for job advertisements, like for instance Infostud, uh, to better understand uh, you know, of, the, of the changes you know, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the market in close to real time. But they were too busy with other things, so um, I would say this, is, this, this was a missed opportunity as well. But the, again, it's not too late to start dealing with, uh, uh, with uh, close to real time data. Um, with, with this, I want to highlight a couple of examples of this using alternative data sources, meaning data sources from uh, uh, usually private sector. And it's, inter it's important to mention that these data sources are usually not precise or representative, but they give you a good indication of you know, what's happening. So, so this is why they're useful. And in Serbia, UNDP wanted to understand the complex phenomenon of uh, depopulation, which is really you know, multifaceted and complex phenomenon. And we called on the community to actually propose us the ways we can use data to understand this phenomenon better. So one of the teams proposed to use Telecom Serbia's data on uh, the usage of mobile telephony, and we did that together with Telecom Serbia and Biosense Institute. So uh, all this data is public, you can play with it. Um, we could, for instance, learn uh, about you know, what uh, places in Serbia are the most isolated, you know, who communicates uh, really infrequently with the others. Or, uh, or, or we, we, we saw that some municipalities almost exclusively communicate with Belgrade. They don't communicate with their surroundings, which was a really interesting uh, uh, thing that we find out. Or on the right side, uh, uh, this is the, 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 these are the countries from which people come and they stay in roaming in Serbia. So this basically gives you an idea where do uh, people from different parts of Serbia go uh, abroad to work? Um, another team from uh, Harvard uh, came up with the idea to use a Google Ads API to map Serbian uh, diaspora because uh, you, can, uh, you can track uh, Serbian diaspora, you can target Serbian diaspora for, you know, on, on Facebook. So, so when, you, when you do this, when you ask Facebook, you know, how many Serbian diaspora is there in each country in the world, you, you get something like this. And this, of course, as I said, will not give you a precise headcount. It's not the purpose of this. The, the purpose of this is, the, is that you understand what's happening and how these things shift. You know, you, you, you can uh, track, for instance, this every six months and understand what's happening. You know, are people coming? Are they going? You know, what, what is happening? Just to get, get, get hold of it because offic official data on immigration is really slow and it's really, it, it's terrible. So, so, so this is a useful proxy for this. Um, and of course, uh, one team uh, used the satellite information, uh, satellite data, remote sensing data like uh, night lights to see uh, where people in Serbia live and how this changes over time. And of course, um, land coverage to detect where people build things as opposed to uh, where there aren't people in Serbia. But we were not always successful, and this should be also stressed uh, when you work with uh, fi fast, you know, changing situations, you will sometimes fail. And you will fail not only because you experiment, but because you, your underlying assumptions are wrong. <laughs> and it happens a lot with the government. Um, uh, it's really important that you try. And we tried, for instance, here to, to our, our initial assumption was that you can use cheap satellite images to map landfills in Serbia. It turned out that you cannot do this cheaply yet. You need more uh, detailed pictures, better quality pictures, and then, you know, it takes a lot more of CPU time and storage, and it's not cheap anymore. I mean, it's doable, but it's, it's, it's probably cheaper, you know, still to send people around to scan for the landfills. But we, in doing this, we learned a lot. We learned not only about the specifics of mapping landfills, but also that, for instance, the, the database of the Serbian Environmental Agency on landfills is in a pretty bad shape. It doesn't contain information about when a landfill was entered into the system, for instance. So we spent a lot of time chasing the landfills. We, we, we had their uh, coordinates, but you know, 
when what was it entered into the system? Was it 2012, 2013? So sp we spelled, spent a lot of time just chasing these landfills over epochs. Um, and we just, you know, we couldn't use this, this, this database, unfortunately, to a full extent. But we documented this. And documenting your failures is, I think, important, sharing the information on this. Uh, and I spoke about... Uh, uh, the obstacles and the problems that we faced. So, these are some of the things that we faced. Uh, you know, the usual things, like, you know, the data does not exist. You cannot open data if it doesn't exist in digital form. Um, or if it exists, it's in poor shape. Or if it's in good shape, you're not allowed to share it because, you know, there's a, there's a law preventing it. Or there are technical problems for extracting data from a database. Or, you know, you don't have any person within the ministry who has uh, adequate uh, uh, skills for uh, working with data, extracting data, maintaining data, etc. Um, people in government institutions usually... Uh, uh, usually even if when they want to work with data, they jump to solutions without doing prior research, without working with the citizens, without working with the private sector. So I mention all these things as problems, but they are actually a huge opportunity space. So the entities, the government entities, the most successful governments who work with data, with open data, with uh, alternative data sources, they actually do, you know, all these things in opposite. So, so. I mean, this could also be interpreted as a business opportunity as well. So help government institutions build capacity, better work, work with data, uh, do better research for data-driven pro well, projects, etc. So that was it. Thank you very much. I suppose if someone question, yes, please. Question. Well, great lecture. I uh, wanted to ask, um, are we able to create an API that would enable us to use uh, government data in real time, or do we have to manually update it? When you say we, what do you mean? Uh, anyone who uses the data. Well, if we decide uh, to use it. For some institutions, like the, 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 Envir the Environmental Protection Agency, they actually expose their data using APIs. And uh, most of the government portals for uh, publishing open data, they provide this API functionality. You know, it's built in. So basically, the moment the institution uploads data, it's usable uh, using APIs. So it's basically integratable into applications. But the tricky part is that... Uh, the, the, the state institutions need to understand that, you know, data is alive. It's, it's a live thing, you know, it has a life cycle. So, so it's not, you know, ne enough to just publish it and forget. You need to take care of this data set. You need to answer comments from the community to provide better documentation, etc., etc. And these things all often get overlooked, unfortunately. More question? Yeah. Please. You need my is my turn? Thanks. Thank you. Great lecture. I didn't have a chance to play a lot around with the uh, Serbian government public data, but tell me, these APIs, are, there, are, are they like readily available? Are, they, are these like open APIs, are, like endpoints and stuff like that? Can we use them right away or there is some kind of registration process? What do, what do you need to do in order to be able to use the data? No, no, no. I mean, you know, access to the portal is free. You can just go to the portal and, you know, like that. download data and start using it. For instance, uh, the, the, one of the latest additions to the portal is the Serbian address registry. The, 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 the Serbian cadaster uh, released georeferenced uh, address registry. So basically, if you're dealing with the e-commerce, you can download this uh, register immediately. It contains uh, uh, latitude and longitude and uh, basically shapes of all streets in Serbia and house numbers. So you can use that in your, um, you, you can integrate it into your business applications today. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. You're welcome.